Okay, I'm back. I actually started video number two, or the second part of this video, a few minutes ago, and I had to stop the video and go pick up my son from school. So I didn't realize what time it was, and he was calling me, Mom, where are you at? So anyway, I'm going to start back up. I did, I'm not going to show the last video because it's only like 15 minutes long, but I'll just start where I started. Uh, I'm going to start from right here, in other words. But from the last video, I've put in this shading here under his neck. Did a little bit of cross hatching here. A little bit of shading on the face. And now I'm doing this basket weave type pattern on his hat. Just to give it a little bit of color. Um... It won't be drastic, but now I'll come back in and I'll do some shading on, on this eventually. But right now I'm just trying to get some of the groundwork laid. All in good time, right? It don't happen overnight. Sometimes it takes... Well, for some people, usually, usually my sketches are pretty quick, but I'm trying to slow down and take my time just to produce better work. And I do find that if I take my time, it does tend to go that direction. Better quality work. I'm a quick painter, quick drawer, usually, and this last year, I've noticed that all that has changed a good bit. I'm not the same artist I was even four years ago. I can just tell a difference. In some ways, I feel like I've gotten better but in other ways I feel like I've gotten worse so my my I guess my mentality is how do I get that to change and the only way I know to do that is to be a little more serious maybe now with my sketchbook drawings I, that's just me doodling in concept so it's not going to be all serious and even the concepts look sometimes childish. But it's like I said, it's concepts. It's just to get something on paper that resembles something that I maybe future-wise want to do. But for pieces like this one, which is a commission piece, I'm going to take it more seriously and take my time with it. Just because I want to give them quality work. And I'm not the best artist out there by no means. And I'm sure I'll get lots of critiques that says, you know, what do you, who do you think you are kind of thing. I don't think I'm anybody, but just an artist striving to make a living doing what I love. So... didn't work. I've got a crossover pattern there. As I got over to this corner, my little cross basket weave pattern started getting bigger and wider, and I just couldn't go that way with it, so I had to tweak it a little bit, and it got off just a little bit, but it'll be all right. Because a good bit of this is probably going to get covered up by shadows anyway. So. Okay, so there's the underneath of the bill of the hat. And. Do I want to do that on the top? I think I may do the same pattern on the top, just around these um, metal panels. And we'll 
probably keep them light. I actually like doing this little basket weave pattern because it's simple and it makes a really cool texture on the piece. So, now that's going to get a little bit lost when it gets up in here. So, and I have to kind of, I have to kind of tilt the angle of these as they go up. To mimic the bend of the hat. Does that make sense? I know right now it's going to look like everything is going to blend together, but I'll come back in, put some shadows on underneath these metal panels, and it'll look more um, like they're standing off the hat a little bit. And of course, I'll probably rusty up the panels a little bit more with my pen. turn this just a little bit. It's just easier for me to get to. Now I hope you got to watch the first video of where I got started on this piece. Uh, this is a commission piece for a former collector client who actually lives in Denmark, which makes me an international artist now, all because of him buying two former pieces that I had. And he's an artist lover, so fine connoisseur of arts. So I'm kind of excited about doing these and excited about getting to do this the steampunk pieces because I really like the steampunk. But if you saw my previous video you'll see that um, this was based on a prior concept sketch that I had in my sketchbook and of course the sketchbook uh, drawing was not what I call quality work for me. Now, other people love it, and that's fine, but for, I guess we're, as an artist, we're our own worst critic. So for me, it was not my best work. It was a concept, and I was more than happy to go in and take the concept and recreate the drawing in a better form for a client. So that that part was exciting. I'm getting to do that. Now in the studio the last couple of days I've been framing some prior artwork, small pieces that I've done in the past. I uh, had a business that wanted to display some of my work um, and so I spent this last week or couple days 
uh, framing those pieces, matting and framing those pieces. I have a, a frame studio and a matting, framing and matting studio in my actual workspace. I actually bought, my aunt used to have a business doing framing and matting and she actually got out of the business because she was getting older and hold on I gotta think here for a second so I bought out her business all of her frame equipment all of her uh, mat board tools everything for a fairly decent price and it's I haven't done a whole lot with per se for people and I've done a couple custom custom frames for people but I've mainly used the framing studio for my own work so that's what I've been doing the last couple days is framing up some artwork to go to a facility and also to uh, I've started painting one let's see one two three about five paintings I've started some backdrops on for some new pieces that I'm working on so I have been working in the studio I haven't been doing as many videos just because I didn't really have content when I do the the big paintings and stuff that's really it's hard to hook up my camera to that area where I work to to see what I was doing and eventually I may get to a point where I can figure out a way of you know hooking up my equipment but for now I actually use my mat cutter. I have a mat cutter that has a big table attached to it where I do my glass cutting and my uh, mats and framing and all that on. And that's where I do my big acrylic paintings is on that surface. And it's about no more than probably 10 feet away from me, but it's just the way my setup is. It's hard for me to get the camera set up and have a place for you to really see me do those works. But eventually I'll get to a place where maybe I can do that and you can see me do some of my acrylic paintings. But mostly what I'm going to be videoing and showing currently will be just things like what I'm doing now, like the pen and ink sketches and eventually I'll get into doing maybe the other. All in good time. It takes time to get everything set up and ready to do what I want to do. So many dreams and so little time to do it in. But the one dream I am focusing on right now is just drawing, 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 painting, getting my artwork to be a consistent thing daily because before I allowed life to get in the way and it really it was depressing for me because it took my creativity away from me and I want to get back to that feeling whole and free again with my creativity and my what God placed inside of me to do and that's to create I love drawing I love I don't know if you want to call it crafts, but um, things that I can make with my hands, things that I can recreate, upcycle, um, that kind of thing. I love doing that. And I may actually do some videos of some of the things I upcycle. I don't do a whole lot of that now just because I was doing a lot of that when I had my antique business. And I no longer have my antique business. Um, if you don't know my backstory, I had brain surgery back in February for a condition known as trigeminal neuralgia. And I had to sell out my business because I physically, between having the surgery and needing the funds to pay for my surgery, because I didn't have insurance, um, but I also had my doctor, my neurologist, not my neurologist, excuse me, my neurosurgeon basically told me that my back was really messed up and that I was going to have to have two back surgeries as well. And then that, because of that, I said, okay, this is time to reevaluate my life. 
find out where do I go from here. I sold out my whole antique business that I had been doing for about three, four years and sold all of my furniture, sold all of my pieces out and started from scratch all over again. And I just started daily trying to sketch and draw in my, um, my sketchbook. And from that, I've been daily putting my sketches on Instagram and on Facebook and wherever. And there's one or two videos that I posted prior um, of some of the pieces I've done. But I've just been trying to daily do it. Just daily sketch and daily draw and just being proactive in that drawing process just because I don't have I don't have the business that side of my business I still have my business I'm still have a business named floodlight studio but I don't have that part of my business anymore that I was doing and um, I'm kind of going back to my first roots and that was just to, to become the best artist that I can be and that's what I'm doing and I know it will be a process it will not come easy I don't expect it to everything comes through hard work and getting the right connections and knowing where to take your art where to sell your art um, and that's probably the, the one place that I'm struggle with the most is I live in a small town where art is um, I won't say it's frowned on it's not frowned on it's just there's maybe not a lot of demand for people buying art so we're a pottery town so anyway Art's a little bit harder to maybe sell here, but I am just doing what I can to get my work out there visibly for people to see and pray that people will like what they see and want to see more of it, want to see more of my work and want to see more of what I do. And, um, let me enjoy life doing what I love doing and what God's placed inside of me to do. Because I do not feel like, and this is just my opinion, okay, take it for what it's worth. I do not feel like God gives people talents and abilities to not be used. Whether it be a singer or a dancer or a musician or somebody who maybe is even good with numbers or a carpenter the, the, any career any any career or thing that you're talented at or gifted in i just feel like god ultimately gave you that talent and it's to use it for his glory it's to use it to bless others uh, to please others i love it when someone sees a piece of my art and they go, oh my word, that really, really speaks to me. And then when you tell your story behind that art, I mean, I've had people tell me uh, the story behind my art gives them goosebumps or chills because it's so impacting. And that's what I want to happen with my art. I want my art to be impactful. I want you to see my work and not say, oh, that's just a great artist. But I want you to see my work and really enjoy where that art takes you on a personal level. Because for everybody who looks at my art, they may see something totally different. Each, especially with my abstract pieces, each person may see something totally different and read into it what they see. But um, some of my abstract pieces do have what I call a story behind them. They were based on a moment that uh, maybe... Uh, I felt like maybe the Lord was speaking to me about some things or maybe I was going through depression or 
going through something and the artwork really spoke to me to sort of get me out of the the what I call stinking thinking I was in we all have struggles we all go through things and none of us are exempt from that we all deal with issues in our life we're not perfect and um, we all have battles and there's honestly guys there's so much depression that goes on right now with people and I see it a lot in artists and I don't I don't know if it's because artists feel like they don't belong or they're disconnected from the world or people don't get them they don't understand them but I know for me that has been sort of my mentality in the past that I don't feel like people get me or understand me and maybe I don't feel connected on the level that they are in because my head is somewhere else you know my head is about art and everything I see I can go outside and watch a sunset and to me it's some grandeur thing that I don't know that other people maybe see it that way and they're like it's just a sunset you know and I'm like no it's not it's more than just a sunset look at the colors look at you know the the shape of the clouds I see things in clouds all the time so you know it's it's just the way an artist looks at things they look at life totally different I can go out in the woods take a walk in the woods and I'm on the ground picking up pine cones and feathers and all kinds of things and I'm thinking what can I do with this at home or you know uh, look how beautiful it is like a pine cone I know that sounds so simple but a pine cone is so beautiful to look at I love little acorns when I was a kid I used to take little acorns and I would uh, paint little faces on the acorn part and the little tops would be their hats, their little, um, their little cap, would be their hat, and I used to paint little faces on them, because that's what I saw in it, I saw an opportunity to take nature and something that was there and bring it to life, I guess you could say, so I do believe that artists deal with, maybe I think differently and I don't fit in and and I'm trying to kind of get past that. And I've actually found a really good group of people um, on Facebook. It's called the Christian Thriving Artist Group. And it's for Christian artists out there who maybe struggle with, uh, what for whatever reason, they struggle maybe to be the artist that they feel like they're called to be. And I started kind of linking up with them and posting some of my things there and getting encouraging words from others when I post my pictures and things. And it really does help. It helps to have um, a group of people that believe in you and that um, really promote and, and encourage you when you feel like maybe your work is subpar or maybe there's something you're struggling with maybe you, like for two weeks I've had you know people have writer's block I had an artist block for two weeks we did this 30-day art challenge with the group and about day 16 I couldn't get past day 16 I got a really bad block and couldn't draw anymore and then when I had somebody call me up and want me to commission some of these pieces it's like one night I just sat down and I drew four different sketches out of the top of my head it's like it all came back to me and it was so weird because I mean I struggled for two weeks I couldn't draw anything I just I couldn't get anything to come to my mind I couldn't uh, I don't know I just I just had a hard time and uh, now I'm having fun with this you know it's like it's like uh, freedom again I don't know it's weird how that works but 
sometimes you have to go when the flow is there and sometimes you have to take a breather and say okay I'm gonna wait until that flow comes back in I was I was on Facebook the other day and I noticed that somebody posted a picture of their den and in their den they they had a white canvas hanging above their their couch and they posted that that was that their uh, canvas was named snow something something about snow snowy white or uh, I can't remember now it has something having to do with like winter snow or something I can't remember but anyway I thought it was neat because they had posted the canvas because they weren't sure um, they weren't sure what to do with canvas at the time and they were going to hang that white canvas above their uh, couch until they felt inspired to create something with that canvas and sometimes we have days like that when the art doesn't come easy now granted the more you draw the easier it becomes and the more inspired you become and the more you want to draw it's just like practice makes perfect perfect I don't my, my son tells me I talk like a country hick yes I'm country I'm from the south so that's what happens when you have a southern girl as an artist she talks with an accent and I have a bad one but anyway <laughs> I'm okay with that <laughs> I might sound like a an educated person, <laughs> but I'm okay with being who I am. This is it's where I'm from. It's who I am. But um, but anyway, what I was saying is it's okay to to have those moments when you maybe can't get down on paper what you want to get down on paper, or you feel. Um, restricted or whatever now y'all saw what I just did I did that one on the inside and I did that one on the outside hmm so we're going to do a double stitch we'll just do it like this and make it like a diamond pattern when you make a mistake like that in art which I'm sure everybody is not perfect with their art and I've made a big boo-boo. I did one on the inside and one on the outside. Because I wanted it to look like a stitch there. But anyway. I'm just going back. And doing a double stitch. And no one has to know. Except for you guys. That that was an error. That I corrected. And that happens sometimes. It does, it does, it happens. At least I don't have this big line across my paper and have to start all over again. I did a pointillism picture not long ago and it was really detailed. I was in the about the middle of it and I decided to draw, it was in my sketchbook so it wasn't something that I was going to sell or anything. But I decided that I was going to... Uh, draw on the back side and when I did I drew with colored pens and did not realize but my colored pens bled through I didn't realize it when I was doing it till after the fact and I ruined that picture and I plan on redoing the picture eventually I haven't gotten the gumption to, to start it over again because it took me a long time to do that but um, it was a really neat concept picture that I did sometimes you know you live and learn some things happen and that was a mistake on my part not to use colored pens in my sketchbook because they bleed through I learned that the hard way so now all I use in my sketchbook is microns pencil watercolor those kind of things I don't use um, that looks kind of cool I don't use that other sketch sketch stuff anymore I mean the uh, I lost my train of thought I don't use the, the, the pens that I was using. Now I'm just going to outline this a little bit darker. 
Africa. And that's his skin coming up over the, his, like right above his eyebrow. Just gonna outline this because I want to start putting some darker shading. And then I'll just cross hatch right through here a little bit. But I'm gonna start doing now. I know I've already got these little basket weave pattern going on, but I also want to create a really I won't go too dark because of the background's going to be black and I don't want it to get lost but I do want to put a shadow underneath this bill of this top hat because even the light shining here might have a little light spot right here on the edge but for the most part underneath the bill is going to be dark. I just cross back over and I'm using this darker or this thicker line than what I had before just because it'll put it put down more ink at once without having to go back over it several times it'll come, come out darker So I know you're probably thinking, well, why did you even just, why did you even do the basket weave pattern on it? Because you just covered every bit of that up. Sometimes when you're drawing, you have to layer. And I never understood that. I've, I've seen many artists paint like that. I never quite, now if you're doing landscape, yeah, I can understand it. But like, I've seen even abstract artists they'll do an underlayment that totally gets covered up and you're like why did you even bother to waste paint doing an underlayment but it's the depth that it creates and you do see a little bit of this pattern it's not extremely covered you do get a hint of that pattern still under there It's just layering. We are layering. And uh, I'm not one to normally layer. But I'm learning to try things that I've never tried before. And it's okay to experiment and try something different. And you might actually find out that you love doing something different. It's okay to do something different every now and again. Just like the, there's a, I'm working on about four or five paintings right now. And basically what I did was I, I don't use gesso on my paintings. I use just white paint um, on the, the boards, the wood canvases that I, that I was using. I didn't gesso. I just went in with some white paint. But anyway, I was working on them the other day. And I tried a fresco technique with my oil knife, my uh, the knife that I use for my oil paintings. And I just took my paint and used my knife and just smeared on the background. And it gave my, um, my boards a fresco look. Hold on one second. Hey, I'm in the middle of a video. Can I call you back? Are you doing anything for dinner? Sure, maybe we can do something. Alright, bye. Okay, sorry about that. That was a phone call I got. Um, but anyway, what I was telling you is I did this knife technique with my tool and it created a fresco look on the canvas for a backdrop and I was really pleased with the way it looked it was really cool actually wanting to do um, 
I live in a house now that's a ranch style house and I hate ranch style houses. It's just my preference. I don't like them. I don't like a house with a big long hall and that's what I have. Uh, me and my husband bought it as a foreclosure and we fixed it up and it's been great because I have a studio space and when I had my antique business I had all the other spaces to store all the my um, supplies and things I was buying to put in my booth. But it's not my preference or style of house that I really, really like. So our intention eventually is to buy about 10, 15 acres of land somewhere and build a, I want to build what looks like a barn, but is modern, well, I say modern, modern rustic on the inside. You know, exposed beams, metal, that kind of thing. I just, I like that, that look. And kind of like the artist loft. That's the kind of look I want to go with. But anyway... Um, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, the technique of the fresco. I really, uh, we did a house, we flipped, me and my husband flipped houses too. So we were flipping a house just a couple months back and one of the rooms that I had to take wallpaper down in, when I peeled the wallpaper down, the house was just old enough that when I peeled it off, that, um, it left this really cool green vertigre, I guess that's how you say it, vertigre, um, green and brown, almost like water had gotten in behind the, the, the wallpaper and it left this really cool fresco looking texture. And I so wanted to leave that room like it was and just go in, clean it up, wax it really good and seal it. And I didn't. Because, of course, we were flipping the house and selling it. But I totally want to do that in my next house. I won't. And I actually have an artist friend out of, well, I say she's, she's a friend. We're connected on Facebook. Um, she actually took an old house or warehouse type building and created a home for herself like that. And she's done, her walls are like that. And I love it. <laughs> It sounds corny, but I love it. It's just, I'm old school. I like things that have um, character and that are nostalgic. And I guess that's why I like the steampunk stuff. Because it is so characteristic and nostalgic. But, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell y'all something that's really funny. I was telling y'all I had surgery and that I'm getting ready to have uh, hopefully two more surgeries. I'm waiting on my insurance to ap approve me because they denied me and uh, I'm waiting on my appeal. But anyway, I've, <laughs> I was having to go to therapy for my back and my doctor sent me to that therapy because I had to do that for the insurance company. And when I got done with my therapy, I noticed that my therapy, oh man, it killed my back. I mean, my back hurt so bad, but but I knew I needed it. So I actually joined what's called Silver Sneakers. <laughs> it's a class for older people at our gym. And it's meant for probably senior citizens and up. Here I am, 46 years old. I'm the youngest one in the class. But I joined that class because the things that we're doing in that class is just like therapy. Um, we're doing a lot of yoga, a lot of stretches, and it has been so good for me. I mean, it it hurts when I'm in that class. I'm, I'm hurting while I'm doing these exercises, and these older people are kicking my butt. They are making me look like a wimp. But it has been so good for my sleep patterns because I have a hard time sleeping at night. And um, it has been really good for that. I've been sleeping a whole lot better. And I was having a lot of neck pain and stuff that was causing, it to, causing me to have trouble sleeping at night. And a lot of that has gotten, I won't say it's completely better because I still have days when my neck and my back hurts all the time but um it has been a big help a big help and 
So anyway, but I had this little old lady uh, work. She was working on a row machine right beside of me one day when I was on a bicycle. And she was, I was telling her about me joining the class. And she was like, well, honey, you're too young to be in there. You should be hanging out with people your own age. And I was like, uh, not, not really. <laughs> I don't really like hanging out with people my own age because to me, they're immature. And um, people probably think that of me too. That's okay. But um, I just, I guess I'm old school. I think about like, I want to be a person who's out of debt. I don't want to owe anybody money. I want to have my house paid off. I want to be out of debt. I don't want to have car payments. I don't, um, I believe that respect comes to those who give respect that in life you work really hard for what you want. I don't believe money just is, should be handed to you. I really believe in, in working for what you have. It's just, I grew up in a home where my mom and dad both worked and my mom worked a public job for a while but then she worked at home but when she was at home she wasn't just a stay-at-home mom she worked her butt off she had sewing factories out of her home um, she tailored men's suits she did all kinds of things with sewing because that was what she was good at and knew how to do and that was her living that's what she did to make money um, she had a t-shirt factory at one time but anyway and then my dad worked at a freight company for 25, 30 years. But even when they weren't working their regular jobs, in the fall, we were out raking leaves all the time. In the summer, we were uh, planting and picking crops out of our garden. And I just remember, and we had chores and everything. Kids don't know what chores are today. But we had chores, and every Saturday, we didn't go and play with our buddies and our friends until all of our chores were done, and, you know, the the family had done what they had planned on doing for that day. And so I, I got, at a very young age, a, a work ethic. Um, now, I haven't worked a public job for the last five years because of my health. Um, the last job that I worked, they thought they thought my teeth was giving me a fit and I had three root canals and two teeth extractions because they thought my teeth were the cause of my problems and didn't know it, but I had trigeminal neuralgia. But I worked through some major pain. I went to work every day and my face, I felt like I was being electrocuted in my face all the time. And so I worked through the pain. Uh, when I was pregnant with both of my kids, I worked all the way up to their due date. And with my daughter, I was two weeks over. I worked. And I was, I worked in a factory. I worked in a factory, lugging boxes around at, I was two weeks over. And so now once I had my babies, I decided to be a stay-at-home mom and take care of my kids and raise them and I homeschooled my oldest for a couple of years until she, whew, until me and her clashed and we butted heads. Very strong-willed kids I have. and um, But I did attempt to do that. But in saying that, I just, I have a different mentality, I think, than a lot of people do my age. And I tend to get along better with older people. I tend to connect with them on a better... One of my best friends is in her 70s. And she's my gym, gym rat buddy. <laughs> she goes to the gym with me and we go out and we'll... Sometimes we'll get lunch together or talk and... And um, we just have us a good old time. But that's just who I connect with. It's just who I am, and I have I do have some friends that are my age, but not many, because I do connect on a different level, and I do connect with young people as well. I connect with older people, and I connect with young people, 
and uh, actually my husband and I used to be youth pastors at several different churches so I connect with young people because it's almost like what the older people give me as far as wisdom I try to impart into the young people of today because they're they're being told something totally different in the school systems and um, but anyway I just don't connect with my own age for some reason. Now I'm just going over everything and darkening up, outlining and darkening up a lot of this stuff just so I can see where things are going to be. Um, because I, everything kind of got lost up here when I put this uh, basket weave pattern in and I may end up going back and darkening it up a little bit. But as of right now, I'm just going around and darkening up my edges on some of these drawings and some of these the sketch the little light lines. But I know everything I just mentioned is just pretty much rambling, but um it's just I'm just giving you a little bit of background about me. A little bit of knowledge about me. Um, I'll tell you, I'll go back even a little further and give you a little bit of knowledge about me. Um, when I was in high school, well, even when I was younger, I loved to read. I loved to write poems. I loved to draw. I loved to color when I was a kid. And then when I got up in high school, I actually wanted to be a clothing designer. I loved art, but I wanted to be a clothing designer, and I actually, when I was in high school, I made, well, say I made, I designed. My mother was the seamstress, so she had to help me out, because I could cross-stitch and do little crafty things, but I wasn't the seamstress. Now, my sister and my brother could sew, but, um, <coughs> excuse me, but I was more of the crafty one, and other than sewing a couple little crazy quilt squares that my mom showed me how to do. I wasn't real good at it, I'll say. But I always was fascinated with clothes, clo clothing and uh, designing. It was just that creative part of me. And because I was around, <clears throat> I guess my mom being a seamstress and everything, I guess that was part of who I, you know, it's part of what I like doing. But I actually have a clothing line that I've started as part of my studio, and it's I've named it Born Again Clothing, but it's all upcycled. I started my studio about five, six years ago making jewelry, and all of the jewelry I was making was totally upcycled materials. <coughs> And I don't know why, but fa it fascinates me to use an object for another purpose. Um, I just, I, if you see some of the pieces that I do, I just, I take clothing that has been pre-loved, pre-worn, and I'll cut it up and I will make a new garment out of it. Or I'll alter it and change it. And I'm not talking about altering it as in... Oh, I'm going to add a little bit of lace to it. I'm talking about I alter it. I cut it up and I reconfigure it and I make my own designs. And um, if you ever get a chance, check out Born Again Clothing on Etsy and Facebook. I'm on there. And you can see some of my, some of my items. But I also have my Floodlight Art Studio on Etsy and Facebook as well. Just trying to cover my grounds. But anyway, that's where I originated from. I really wanted to do the clothing designer, be a clothing designer. And when I got out of high school, I realized what a hard market uh, or job that would be to get into, field to get into, I would say that word. And so I ended up going to college for, uh, I started out doing fine arts. And then I switched over to commercial art. And I uh, I went for a year and got my certificate in that. 
just so I could get kind of out there and get a job and I really kind of found out I did not like the commercial side um, as well as I thought I would and it took for me it took out a lot of the creativity for me that I enjoy that makes my work pleasant it took that away from me and that I didn't like so I do have that certificate behind me but I've, I've not done anything commercially uh, now I did it on several businesses I have owned several businesses in the past where I used to do signs and logos for companies and uh, at one time um, I think I was doing signs and logos for a company and then at one time I did another business where I was doing more like handmade items that were painted and different things and uh, those businesses didn't really what you say take off but I had not found my niche I had not found where I really I guess needed to be and um, then when I started doing the last business, which was, I started out with my artwork and jewelry, and I, uh, people in my town, I do a lot of abstracts, so it was kind of off the wall, and people just maybe weren't as <laughs> maybe keen on, on that type of art. Now, in my town, people love art that's like painted cows and chickens and because we're sort of not farmers but we have a lot of people who are into the antiques and the shabby chic furniture and the artwork that represents sort of the, the farm feel and so that's not my style that's not I can do that I can do watercolors and create those looks and I have in the past done realistic what I call realistic paintings but I tend to keep gravitating toward this off the wall stuff like this picture here being steampunk I just gravitate towards something that's not so um, generic maybe is the word I'm trying to look for and it's funny because when I was in high school I had my bedroom was white and had these big panel strips that went down the wall and I never did it but I wanted to always paint I love 1950s era music and I wanted to paint Marilyn Monroe and James Dean and Elvis and some of these all, all over my wall <laughs> I wanted to do a big mural of these people on my wall and my mama would have let me do it it she was so supportive of anything I did she would have so let me do it but I just I never got around to it but so I've always liked that graphic quirky side of things but um, so that's kind of me that's that's my life story I've like I said I was originally wanting to be a fashion designer I, I actually do create clothing now um, from upcycled garments <coughs> excuse me and I do the art and that is the two things I still have some jewelry and stuff in my my studio gallery shop that I have in my home but most of what I'm focusing on right now is the art and the clothing <coughs> and everybody has a dream my dream is to one day have a all-inclusive floodlight art shop where everything uh, in the the gallery studio space is created and designed by, by me my floodlight uh, business and I have big dreams on that uh, I want to create spaces a design studio for interior design because I do I have done interior design in the past and I enjoy doing that I want to create a space where people can come in and 
and talk with me as clients and, and go over, you know, maybe some things they want to change around in their house and then incorporate artwork and, and, and all in the process. And also, um, I love to read, I love books, and I have quite a good collection of artists, painting books, craft books, interior design books that I have collected over the years. And I want to create a personal library. I know this this I know this all sounds silly maybe to some people, but this is my dream. I want to create a library in my shop that is either a book exchange, check out kind of like a library, buy. Um, in other words, it would be all three. There'd be a place where people can buy books, a place where people can exchange books, and a place where people can just come in and uh, even look at the books or check them out. And even maybe have a printer set up where if they see an idea for a craft project or something and they don't want to take the book out, they can print it off and take that project home and do it. And, of course, I would have classes to where we can learn to do some of this stuff. But I just, it's kind of like I want to see this art house. Like, we're all inclusive. Everybody can come and just be creative. Uh, it's not just a one kind of studio where somebody just comes in and learns to paint or draw. I want it to be so much more than that. And I want it to be a place of healing for people who um, need it. I mean, for me, art has been a healing uh, thing to do for depression, for anxiety. It's been really good. It's, it's good therapy. So that's, that's my dream, is to, I have an art studio gallery in my home now, but I want to one day have the land and a, a shop or a house. I'd love to fix up an old house in, in like a downtown uh, of a city somewhere and, and do that. And I would just go to my other house during the day and run my shop. But that's just kind of my dream. Something I would love to do. And some days I think I'm getting too old to start all over again and do all that. But then there's part of me that thinks I still want to do that. I still want to fulfill my dream. So I'm, work I'm working toward it. Slowly but surely. I'm like the the uh, tortoise with the tortoise in the hair. I'm like the tortoise. I'm slow and steady working toward my dream. I would say to anyone who's out there who's really chasing a dream, don't give up on your dreams. There's a lot of roadblocks sometimes that may come, but your dream is worth pursuing if it's something you love to do and it's something you enjoy doing and want to do uh, to make a living with and to make yourself happy and others happy go for it don't let anybody I get a lot of criticism from my well most mostly my family people that are uh, the closest to you sometimes are the ones that <laughs> I love my family. They are just blunt. My son is a fantastic drawer. Him and my daughter both. My daughter is a tattoo artist and my son does a lot of pen and ink. He started just recently doing digital art. Um, but fantastic artist and he is my critic. And he will tell me, Mom, that don't look right or you need to do this or you need to do that and sometimes it's hard to hear that criticism but sometimes it just stirs me to just want to try that much harder because I'm like I've got I want to make this work I'm I'm not going to give up on this you know I'm not going to hang the towel in because somebody says my work maybe doesn't look like what they want they think it should look like and you know what? As an artist, it's okay for your work not to look like somebody else's. You are your own individual. 
and you're not meant to be someone else. You're meant to be you. And embrace that. Run with it. Be you. Be the, the best artist that you can be. And most of all, make yourself happy in the process. Do something you love. And don't do it because people um, want you to do it or because people think you can or can't do it. Um, do it because you want to do it and you love doing it and because it makes you happy. How many times has people got, how many, how many people out there have jobs that they absolutely hate? I don't want to live like that. I, I just don't. I don't want to hate my job. I want to love my job. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. And I'm giving a little bit of shadow right now to, well, I say a shadow. I'm darkening up this texture on the hat a little bit. And there again, I know y'all are probably thinking, I just went through all that trouble to do this. And then I'm crossing back over it. But it's all building, there again, layers. So, I'm building layers to give this hat just a little bit darker because most top hats are black. Yeah, I'm sure there are some that are different colors, but most top hats that we see are this black color. So I want you to pick that it's black, but maybe with a little bit of highlights on it from the, from the light source. And of course our background will be black, so I don't want it to fade away and get lost. This is all details. Just the details. And the details is what's fun. It's tedious, the details, but it's fun to start seeing that come together. And I'm kind of anywhere there's like an edge, I'm kind of pulling away from that edge. And what that creates is sort of a, you get like a light source that hits in between these edges, almost like a shadow will be off of these. And you're getting a light source that's sort of in between it. And normally that's what's going to happen. You're going to see darkness around a surface that's overlapping another object. And that's what we've got here. These little gears and the metal plates and all that is overlapping the hat. So everything coming off of that or right away from it will be darker than what's furthest from it. So right here in the center, this is furthest from these edges. You still get a hint of that basket weave there, but we're making the hat just dark enough that now everything uh, that's sitting on top of the hat's going to pop. Got to get that pop factor. Got to get that contrast and that pop factor. Because if you don't, you're going to just have a flat picture. It's going to look like it has no dimension. It's not going to have any character. We're trying to create dimension and character here by doing this. There 
and of course we can't forget inside these little crevices where the cogs and wheels and all are. In places like this where you have two overlaps, you have this object and then this object overlapping that, you're going to have deeper shadows where there's more. Um, only because, say that you have this object is overlapping that object. But then you have this object on top of that object. So that's three layers right there. Well, here's the fourth layer. So we could even come in and do like a shadow under that, like you're seeing. this shadow off of that wheel. The higher up, the further away the shadow is going to be. The closer to the object, the closer the shadow is going to be. So. And then one last panel up here. So up here I cross hatched that panel and I didn't do the other so I'm going to go in and cross hatch these other panels right quick just to give it some more texture. I got some rivets down here. I'll make sure we get those rivets in. And then of course our clock face. I'm just going to do dots. I don't think I'm going to try to do numbers. It would be cool with numbers. But I think I'm going to pass on that. And then I may just come in here and do like another line and that was totally not even even Almost like the inside of the clock had a uh, a second little row of strands there. All right, and then the only other thing. Oh, I didn't put I didn't put any of this behind this glass. And I'm not sure I kind of want that one to be clear, but I kind of like the fact of that one being 
but they would normally wouldn't be like that. I probably should have colored that in or made it white like that one. Huh. But since I made that one clear, I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm going to go in here, go back to my other pen, and I'm going to do the little cross hatching. Oh, the little basket weave, rather. I'm going to do it light. So you're seeing through the lens. I have to do like I did all the others. I have to kind of go back in here and darken it up a little bit. And we don't want to cover the whole lens because we want it to we want it to look like you're seeing through the lens to what's underneath. And there again, I'm going along the outside and pulling in so you have a lighter spot in the middle. I'm going back out again just to darken it up some more. And again on the other side. And of course I need to highlight this, or not highlight it, but darken up this brim. Just because it kind of gets lost against those backgrounds. Okay, there you go. We got two lenses. What I may do is this right here to make that lens look like the rest of the like the rest of it being clear. Now what happens here is when I go to put the background, when I go to put in the black, these little spots here will be black, of course, because that's behind him. But the face of the, the lens is going to look like you're still seeing through it. And then to make it look like a glass with maybe, you know, that little line that goes across the glass. Like this. Is it that look of that's a you're looking through a glass there? All right, so I think I'm still not sure about the color thing. My client, we, we discussed it and we've agreed that it would be really cool to put just a little pop of color somewhere and I'm not sure on this piece where that pop of color is going to come in at Let me 
just make these little rivets a little bit deeper. Like they're standing off the front just a little more. And on these up here, I think I'm going to do a little bit of what looks like rust. I actually did a mural in my son's room a couple years back, and I did these square panels of what looked like rusty metal panels all across his room. And uh, it was really cool. I used grays and... Um, kind of a burnt umber orangey tone that looks like real rust and everywhere there was a rivet I had what looked like rust coming off of it and it dripping almost oh we can work on his eye I forgot about his eye Eyes would do much better if I had watercolor going on here because I could layer it but for right now I'm just taking my bigger pen and doing the little starburst effect then I'll take my finer one and go back and do some finer starburst effect I don't want to get it too dark his pupil is really large in this picture and that would be indicative of the dark background in the room and this eye is supposed to be closed so let's make his mustache a little bit darker in some places And of course underneath his brow, it's a little bit darker on the underside. And of course his hair. You know what I forgot to do his thumb while ago. I forgot to shade that in. That finger was a little bit thicker than I wanted, so what I did was I put a shadow over here. I'm going to do the same thing here. And of course, under here, we'll put that shadow under. What's wrong with me? I've got a cough for some reason. 
haven't had one all day until I got on here, of course, you know, the way things work. I feel a little bit stopped up for some reason. Alright, so I'm going to stop right now and this has been another hour and 20 minute session, I didn't mean to take that long, but I'm going to stop and we'll come back and hopefully finish up this piece on the third round and hopefully my next drawings won't take quite as long, but then again, you never know. I really try to take my time with this, so uh, like I said, it's for a client and I wanted to make sure it looked really good, so... All right, I hope you guys join me for part three of this steampunk character with the mechanical bee. And I will talk to you later. If you have any comments, please make them great. <laughs> I need all the encouragement you can, I can get, and I would love to hear from you guys. Any ideas or suggestions would be great as well, as I am just, like I said, just been getting back into art for the last five years, been out of commission for about 20 years to raise my kids and so for me this is all kind of new again so comments would be appreciated and we will talk to you later bye